welcome back to another episode of High and Dry with Jamie and Sky. I'm Jamie and I'm Sky. And we're going to be getting into it today. Yes, today's episode is a little clickbaity. <laughs> uh because we had a hard time actually with this episode because we think everything about being sober makes our life better. Yeah. But we wanted to talk about the challenges of being sober. And the things that we don't like so much about yeah. being sober. These are the things that we hate about being sober. <laughs> <laughs> we love it, but we, we love it. We hate a couple things. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is not being invited to things. Okay. I think that... I think this is a super normal one of something that people would be scared of before getting sober. Yes, and particularly... Jamie, when she quit drinking, you had more friends from high school. Yeah. Whereas I had more of a group of friends that I made partying. Yes. And cool, coolly enough, (laughs) I still am friends with a lot of my party friends. They have accepted me. But at first it was an adjustment. And I think actually it was a lot of me thinking that I wouldn't be invited or I wasn't invited when they didn't really care. Mm -hmm. I think and I think that's super normal for people to be worried about that, whether or not it's going to happen or is true. It's a big concern for people before actually taking that step into getting sober. Um, Yeah, like I think I had a bit of that concern when I got sober. It was like the beginning of the pandemic. So everyone was kind of cooped up anyway, quarantine. And then when stuff started opening up, I wasn't worried about that as much. Like I still knew my friends were going to be my friends. Did you ever have a moment with a friend? Like, I know we're going to talk about it with strangers when strangers are disrespectful or judgmental Mm -hmm. about your sobriety. But did you ever have a a moment with a friend when a friend was like, so I don't like that you're sober or like that you can't come because you're sober. It's more of a drinking thing. I didn't know if you'd want to come. Like, did you get any of that? Maybe a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so much, though. I only had one instant in, instance, and that's the instance I talk about all the time, oh, yeah. where I went for dinner with one of my girlfriends, and I told her I was sober, and, and she just got, like, a beer. She was driving, but she dropped me off after the dinner and was just like, let me know when you drink again. Yeah. And I was like, okay. okay. But it's like, that's more of a her thing than it is you. Yeah. And I, it did hurt my feelings at the time, to. but, like, I just, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. That was the only time, though, that someone, like, clearly just did not. somebody like that you shouldn't be friends with no and that's it comes down to that and but at the time of course it feels like kind of like an attack on you or your character or your personality yeah like am I not at school or it's fun and it's not the case it's them telling you more about them than you and it Um, can also take a minute to make new friends sometimes I feel like for sure I mean like you're naturally going to make more I mean as we evolve we all evolve as we get older and like that's just life people come and go into your life some people stay but you hopefully will be continuing to make friends that are aligned with who you are yeah and I think getting sober you can lose some of those friends for sure and realize like oh like where what were you actually benefiting from the social life will come yeah um but okay fine when it's here and like you feel like you have a hold on it I mean it's like still putting yourself out there like regaining your confidence if you've lost it is very going to be very important um you know, like, you have to come to realize that, like, the fun that you have to give and what you have to offer isn't because of who you were when you were drinking. Mm. Like, you, it's, I don't know, like, and I know I'm an extrovert and I'm very outgoing and I don't struggle with making friends or being social. And I know a lot of other people aren't that way. So I understand why it's, it's a scary thought. But like, the pe- the right people for you will come and the right people will stay and the rest will just fade out. Yeah, see, I feel like I discovered I was a lot more introverted when I quit yeah. drinking, though. Like, uh-huh. I'm a lot more of a shy, kind of awkward uh-huh. person than I thought I was. Uh-huh. I was a very, like, smooth-talking, kind of social girl when I was drinking. And the real, like, authentic me is a lot shyer and, like, sometimes doesn't – I don't have things to say, like – I used to always have things to say to people if I ran into them, like in a good way, like, hi, how are you? And I would be able to carry on the conversation when I was drinking. And now I find I'm like, Mm -hmm. "Uh, uh." yeah, (laughs) (laughs) and that like that I do hate about being sober is that I'm way more authentic, but I'm a lot more awkward and shy. And that's something that I want to bring up, too, is dating sober. Oh, yeah. 
uh-huh. dating we'll sober do a whole thing on and we'll do a whole episode on, but we just wanted to touch on it in the, in, I think it's a lot of, I actually don't hate it. I like it more now that I'm sober to be honest. Cause I'm, yeah. I'm not as toxic. I'm not oh, as totally. all those things, totally. but I think a lot of people think that they'd hate that about being sober. Of course. Like, yeah. And sure. In the beginning, like it is a little, you're like, Oh my God, like I'm going to go on a date and like, I'm not going to, I'm oh. not doing shots before drinking yeah. a few glasses of wine and uh. like getting that like extra pep in your step. And yeah. Confidence before you meet up yeah. with like potentially a stranger from like a dating app or whoever, someone you met, but like a date, you know, obviously that calms your nerves initially, but then you often f- find on the date that you're like saying things or being more yeah. obnoxious. Than yeah, see, of, that's like, okay. That's the thing I actually hate is guys getting drunk, okay. drunk calls from now that I'm sober oh. and I used to do it. Oh yeah. But like the <laughs> drunk calls, like when a guy that you're seeing drunk calls you or drunk texts you and all that stuff, just I'm just like, annoying. you are, it's Cringe. such a turn off. Cringe. It's yeah. such a turn off. But I used to be that person. Or when they start acting not, different yeah. when they're drunk. Like, I don't mind if, like, a guy I'm seeing drinks. But when they get uh-huh. drunk, I find it to be a turn off now. Yeah. Um, okay, so now this is the thing we hate the most. Mm-hmm. I What? The thing I hate the most, I know, is dealing with other yeah, people. This like, is, I, this this is the thing me, that we hate the most honestly, about being sober. Truly, I don't, like, everything about being sober and not drinking, I, I love. Like, my life is so much better. But I still, and the hardest thing has been dealing with people in social settings or just anywhere, but people that have stuff to say about it. And to, and I know it's about them. They are projecting their own issues onto me, but it's so in a way. It's pro- like, people projecting their issues onto me is yeah. my least thing, favorite yeah. thing about It's the yeah. thing I hate about yeah. being so I hate that. I I'm hate like, it. Keep your bullshit to yeah, yourself. Yeah. So Jamie and I were at the local patio in Kitsilano in the summer and enjoying our meal <laughs> this was this a veggie burger literally we were just friend. trying to eat in peace <laughs> and enjoy each other's company like we always do and this guy beside us who was with his boyfriend i believe Someone, he wasn't yeah. interested in us i don't no, think no, no. in a like no. sexual way and he said to us, um, have a shot with us, ladies. It's your turn. No, they were actually, green tea. he said, let's do these pickleback shots with us, which is even so much worse. <laughs> like, like, how old are we? Anyway, but like, <laughs> do these pickleback shots with us. And we sit down. He's like, do the, we're doing pickleback shots. Like, do two with us. And we said, no, thanks. We actually don't drink. Which is the easiest way out always, because not only is it the truth, but it's just like, just, all right, now just say nothing back. Just say, oh, okay. Yeah. But instead, he's like, what you don't drink like no, he, he went like what yeah you don't drink and he's like the, this he's is the like, worst part this is what my favorite line he's was. like how do you live yeah that's what he said and i was so i had to bite my tongue from being i like, had to bite my tongue too yeah like we yeah. both wanted to be like you're an alcoholic <laughs> yeah you have problems i wanted to be like I, my life is better than yours not because you drink but because you have this outlook like and, and it's funny because in that moment we're both kind of having thoughts about each other. He's judging us for not drinking and thinking that we're lame or our life is not as good. And I'm judging him because I'm thinking that like you need alcohol to find life fulfilling that without alcohol, without this substance, it's not as good your life. And it's like, that's so sad. If anyone thinks that way, like drink, if you can do it in moderation and under control, but if you think that like without it, your life Mm -hmm. is less, that's not right. It's like, it's like people, you're telling people private things about you right away because you can't, you say that you don't drink. But it can and be then they know they uh, Yes, but then they know, they think they know you. Yeah. And that's what I think is really weird is that they make assumptions that they know you very personally when they are strangers. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you live or those comments? It's like, how dare you? You don't know me. You don't know my story. You don't know I was depressed and anxious and like all of these things. And it's so weird that they feel like they can make assumptions and judgments based on like such a personal decision for yourself. Just an array of things. Like, like, let's say that's why I I think it's what I hate. Yeah. It's like, let's say I don't drink because I had a parent who was a raging alcoholic and died and did all these messed up things. And so as a result, I don't drink. And this person is out here making comments when this is like deeply, yeah. deeply affected me. And obviously that's not the case for me, but it could be for the next person who doesn't drink. Yeah. And it's like everything, like 
you just be kind for everyone. Yeah, you I think if someone just bottle, says like, no, anyone. thank you, just fucking shut and up. And the funniest thing is it's always people in hospitality who work around alcohol and see the negative effects of it who are the most understanding. Yeah. Right off the bat, if you say to someone who works in hospitality that you don't drink, they just go, good for you. My, honestly, my cokehead friends have been some of the most supportive <laughs> people in my sobriety. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's so surprising. And I actually found the least supportive people about in my sobriety, unfortunately, was a lot of my wino girlfriends mm-hmm. who were not very supportive. And the girls mm-hmm. that like are probably abusing alcohol, mm-hmm. but they look like they have it all together. Yeah. We're the least. Yeah. Actually, this is actually what I would say I hate about being sober. Mm-hmm. Other people policing. Ugh. Okay. Yeah. One thing for sober people to police my sobriety, drunk people who are okay. drunk policing my sobriety drives me like I was having dinner with some friends in Toronto over the summer this guy I went on a horrible date with like two years ago who has a TikTok account where he talks about being an incel and why he hates women so like I was did the right thing yeah I went he was he's like 40 I went on a date with this guy he was cute at the time he's he's cute actually so I went on a date with him we drank sake yeah like like, he's like he's not like I don't he's not an incel he's just like 40 and really angry and like worked in tech so kind of (laughs) but anyways (laughs) He, his TikTok is like, you know what I hate about women? Oh, God. You know what I hate about modern oh. women? Like, it's like that. So, in cell yeah, vibes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anyways, so he, we went for Saki in Ossington, which, like, tells you about him, I think, enough that you need to know. Like, <laughs> anyways, so I'm at dinner with my friends, and he's nice. at the restaurant, and I'm having a mocktail with my friends, and he walks up to my table, like, we're eating dinner, and he goes, is that a mocktail? <laughs> and I go, like, hello? And he goes, I, I know your Instagram. I know you're not drinking. Is that a mocktail? And I'm like, yeah, it is. But like, buddy, why the fuck is that any of your business? Like, so weird. it's just so weird. It's, so, it's weird. so fucking weird. And like, sometimes I feel like people will check on me and ask me if I'm sober, if they're still drinking for advice and stuff. This guy, are you still sober? Whoa, how long has it been? How, how do you do that? Blah, blah, blah. But, like, the policing thing is fucking weird. And, like, uh-huh. anytime I'm in Toronto, what happens with a couple totally people? Or like, where say, I have a saying, I have a soda, like, a vodka soda uh-huh. and a short, like, uh-huh. like a soda, but it's uh-huh. in a short glass. People will be like, what's that? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. okay, but you are clearly fucking abusing alcohol. Maybe focus on yourself. Yeah. But that's all it is. It's projecting. And, like, I mean, and it's people police often. If I, if, like, there's no word. What am I supposed to say? I'm dry. I say I'm sober. Sure, I do some, I like mushrooms or weed once in a while. Like... And some people, oh, well, that's not sober. It's like, okay, I'm talking about I'm sober from the substances that were going to kill me. Like, also, the, the, like that's what people meet. Do you drink or are you sober? Are you sober tonight? Like, that's just, and who cares? It's just a word. But like, so many people have a problem with it. My problem, my problem with being sober and not drinking is other people. And, and I'm such a people person. I'm like so easygoing. And like, don't, I'm pretty you unfazed are. by most things. You are. Sometimes it is annoying. <laughs> I know where I'm like, I can put up with a lot of shit, but sometimes people <laughs> are just so annoying. They just have such a reaction to not drinking. And it's like, wh- oh, you're surprised I'm not poisoning my body yeah. and having. But on the flip numbers. side, one of my favorite things about being sober is when someone has a reaction to your sobriety and they, you see yourself in them from the past. For sure. And they need of help. Course. And that's where I recognize it, where yeah. I'm like, that's where I'm like, I can see it when it's kind of like they have this big reaction because they just are like, oh my God. And I can see a problem. And I'm like, if you want to talk about it, like I'm here to talk about it. If you want to hear my story or whatever it is, if you want to, my DMs are open. Like those people I'm fine with, even if they kind of come in hot, I'm fine with it. It's more just like the assholes about it, being out and whatever. Someone has something to say. And I'm like, you are out here acting like a fool in this club or this bar and you're surprised that I'm not. You're acting like a fool. Like, a fool. like sorry. <laughs> and there's this quote. Um, what is it? There's this quote. She said, she quotes someone in uh, Quit Like a Woman. Yeah. Um, Which I forced Jamie to read. I'm not, I'm almost done. I'm listening to the audio book. But she quotes an unknown person, but she says, there's, some, there's something about that guy that I don't like about myself. And I find that's so much of what people maybe have issues with, like, or you know what I mean? Like when I'm not drinking, like they're seeing something I like me telling them I don't drink is just reflecting in them. Like 
the the problems that they still do. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, like they you're a direct representation of the things they hate about themselves. Yeah, yeah. And I think that I used to do that like when I was in when I was partying a lot, like girls that had it all together that I thought had it all together. I don't have it all together now. I'm you know what I mean, but girls that I perceived weren't partying and and were happier than me and had it like we're striving towards their goals and all of those things and we're kind of living the life that I wanted to be living mm-hmm. I kind of othered them and would be like oh they're the other types like they're the I'm not like one of those girls they're that kind and I don't have a mm-hmm. stick up my ass or whatever I would do the same judgment mm-hmm. for sure mm-hmm. so this is my final thing that we have on our list of why we hate being sober And it's the challenge of accepting and forgiving your drunk self. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. (laughs) Yeah, it was for a bit. Once you get over it. But yeah, like where you're like, you know, you just have to sit in the shame of all the things you've done and the embarrassing things, which like we can do a whole episode on some embarrassing moments but most of mine are like amazing guess, yeah to me it was it wasn't actually forgiving myself for anything that I did like that because most uh-huh. of it's just like kind of funny stories uh-huh. that I did drunk um for me it was how many how much time I wasted yeah. with mm-hmm. being mentally ill mm-hmm. and so depressed and so anxious and it just made my heart hurt so much that I was living like that for so long and that I, or even still, or I didn't, like, I won't get that time back. The time and just like, cause like obviously my issues were worse than yours. So where I'm like, the things that I let happen to me or the things that oh, I obviously yeah. op- took part in, like I, that I had to do with, like, I was just like, so didn't care about myself in ways where I would like allow bad things to happen or like, like with guys, with guys, with just like choices I was making, like things I was doing that just weren't good for me but I was just in such a skewed skewed like time of my life and so I had to and obviously like what I put my family through like I've said before and like Mm. so I had to like there was a lot that I had to do to forgive myself for the choices I make and had to just know like I was sick I was unwell uh, and like just forgive that girl in me so that like took some time I think and like I'm at a place where I feel okay about it because mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, that's everyone in any way, even if uh, without drinking, we're always going to have regrets mm-hmm. or things that you look back on in life that you like wish mm-hmm. you did differently, but it takes a bit of time to come yeah. to terms with who you were and who you are now. And like, I'm a different person. Like I'm the same person, but I'm so different. Something so, that also helps that my therapist taught me was to like write a letter to that version yeah. of yourself mm-hmm. and be full of empathy and compassion and write a letter to the drunk version of yourself. If there is anyone listening that's struggling with that, that that's something they hate about being sober is dealing with the repercussions of their, uh-huh. of their abuse. And if you're, abuse. if you're doing 12 steps, like that, that's in the yeah. 12 steps is a lot of about forgiveness and asking for forgiveness and making amends with the people you might have wronged. And another thing that I hate about being sober <laughs> is, like, oh, is I can't blame things on being drunk anymore. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, that's the worst. <laughs> oh, sorry, I said that. Sorry, yeah, I was drunk. Oh, yeah. sorry, I missed this. Like, oh, it's true. Uh, now I'm like, I've, you've come close. Not sorry, anymore. I dated that guy. I just, yeah. I, I was drunk. God, yeah, the thing, well, I've come close in the, my early sobriety to using it because I'm, it's like second nature. And then yeah. I'm like, oh wait, no, I'm, I, I can't say that. Now I'm like, I cannot say that, and I wish I could. Sometimes it's so easy. I have to be accountable. I hate. Like, that are too. you kidding me? I hate that too, especially times when you were just horny, you weren't drunk. And you realize being sober, a lot of the times you were just horny, you weren't drunk. Your judgment was skewed because oh you were horny, God. not drunk. And that is, I think that's actually one of the biggest like, lessons that I've learned <laughs> sober is you were just horny, not drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because like, I would, I thought that like I would have better judgment and taste in men when I got sober. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, you'd hope so, right? When I think about the guy, the last guy I was seeing in Toronto, I 
cannot. Like, you know what I mean? talk about someone. That, that, is, that, is, that is, like, the biggest you, thing oh, I think that I actually hate about being yeah. sober is that I thought the expectation, like, all the other <laughs> expectations, like, I lost all this weight. I'm in amazing mm. shape. I have these amazing relationships with my friends and families. Every Like, everything's gotten better except my judgment about that shit is still needs work yeah. i'm working on it we're working we're on, working it. on I mean, it the first guy i was seeing got, got sober was a sociopath <laughs> he, like a legitimate like one a, though like not but like you're not even talking shit right now he no, legitimately no, no. Yeah. was yeah. a sociopath that's so hot yeah see horny <laughs> <laughs> this is what i'm saying you're sober but you're still horny and that is the craziest thing about being sober is that yeah. you that you realize a lot of your poor judgment. And I would love to talk about it, to talk to a sober man about this mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I bet they still are just out here. Okay. And another thing, I guess we were talking earlier about this is like our perspective obviously is different being sober. So the way that I look now, it's not at all. This does not come from a place of judgment when you see like act, friends in active addiction or who are actively doing shit like are making wrong choices with this substance it's it's hard to relate i don't know like it's hard to relate to friends or people you know that are on that bullshit that you used to be because now coming out on the other side you're like just do like i I, when i got sober i didn't have anyone close to me that was sober so it was like really scary going into it being like okay i'm gonna be like my first sober friend like what if all these changes whatever but now having done it successfully and like a few of my other close friends too have stopped drinking and successfully and are having their lives are better and have changed so other friends that aren't like it's hard to it's hard to like relate even though I can because I was there it's just so hard to relate now with this clarity and like new perspective I think it's it's not that it's I relate to their issues I relate to their addiction I I relate to like I will never forget what it feels no, like to no. sit and in the anxiety that I felt and like just the mental torture that I was going through. I will never forget what that feels like. So I relate to all of, of the course. pain that people are going through. The thing that I can't relate to that I have a lot of trouble with is the denial. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like the first few steps of being sober, I wasn't fully acknowledging how big of issue it was for me. And then the the longer I've been sober, the less on my bullshit I am, the more like I'm going to therapy. I take accountability for all my bullshit. Like I apologize to people when I've wronged them. And I I try to take accountability for my life in such a big way Mm -hmm. that like, you know, like when I audition, I fucking memorize lines and tried my hardest and I still don't get it. I need to work harder. I'm not out here blaming anybody else. Mm -hmm. And it is really hard to relate to. And I was that person at one time. It's really hard to relate to someone who will not acknowledge that they have a problem or that life could be better or that they could work harder or all of these things. And it's sad and it's hard and I get it because it's like, it's this illness that tries to convince you you don't have it. Yes. Or like that there's ways to get around. And I was in that denial for a long time. So I'm not, but it is hard being here now, not being a judgmental asshole. Uh And I do struggle with that Uh for sure. I, it's not it doesn't come from a place of judgment because it's like again we can relate it's, it's just really hard watching a soccer game when someone's fucking it up and you're like uh-huh. cheering for the team and you're like uh, no come don't like, come on yeah, no yeah. don't go that way yeah. don't shoot pass like yeah. that's what it feels like yeah. i would say and it's hard when you like you try or like people come to you for help or whatever but then when like advice isn't taken yeah. And then kind of repeating these same conversations. It's like, and I was that person at one point, but I had to take accountability and like take action for my life to get better. Yeah. Otherwise, like it is kind of like not triggering, but it's just. Like, it is triggering. Yeah. Where you're like, it takes me back to a place that like I don't want to be. But it's not about people who reach out to me for help because I love that. I'm like, I'll, I'm all ears. I'm all, I will talk, sit and talk to you and do what I can to help. Yeah. But when it doesn't feel like it's being not received but like isn't like going anywhere well, they're, they're not ready they're not and they're ready. not ready you're not ready but that's been a bit of a struggle especially with like friends um because it's like obviously you care so you oh, want to do as much as you can you know what i love about being sober but i also hate is the ability to see everyone with a drinking problem I know, in the room. right away <laughs> right away it's crazy that weird superpower so you crazy. get where and i've talked to so many sober people Same. about this where you walk into a room and you're like that guy's an addict yeah 
like in a second it's so weird and some you you'll, and you'll people be sitting like, in a room and they to? sometimes i think they know that you see them yeah yeah and they they know and you uh-huh. can look them in the eye and just like you're just like uh-huh. and they're like uh-huh. it's you know that weird yeah. silent thing yeah. that happens yeah it's so weird there was something about that clarity it can't be explained until you experience it yeah but like and I feel like it comes off as being so like sounding, trying to like being so righteous, but it's like, it's not, it's just like, it is what no, it we is. We just it's know. It's purely weird. observational, but it's just like, you know it, you know it. Yeah. And I'm every sober, sober person I've spoken to sees it the same. Yeah. It's so weird. It's like, and obviously it's like, cause we can recognize in that person what was, once was us. Yeah. So that's why. I think like, that's why. Yeah. But like a girl who comes in to some restaurant, like immediately like gets a shot gets a drink like someone who like things like that you're like just the way that they're the way that their yeah, energy there's there it's in their eyes speaking of silence and in the eyes shall we get to oh. our oh. topic of today that has nothing to do with alcohol it kind of does i mean the gym is like the bar to us now yeah, this is our new social scene and this place <laughs> so much happened the other day so like it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah we want to talk about since we're not we don't and it's not that we don't go to bars as much because we, we don't. don't want to it's just we're, we live in vancouver vancouver okay? is There's no scene here it, there but is a little baby one but it's not yeah. good. people ra- drive around in limos here though which is pretty cool yeah yeah but <laughs> going to the bar or sorry going to the gym is the bar is the bar for us for sober people <laughs> yeah. there is some we want to talk about the sexual tension that is in the gym and in airports and it's a very specific sexual tension. And it only exists really, from my knowledge, oh, sometimes libraries. Oh, but no one goes to libraries anymore. There, so, so yeah. like university libraries. But um, the gym and airports and sexual tension. And it's a very specific type of sexual tension that exists. Yeah. The airport is a little different than the gym, though. It's a different kind, but it's there. Yes. Like the gym... It's more sexual, like... By nature. Yeah. You know, there's tight clothes, nice bodies all around. Testosterone is flowing. Pheromones. Testosterone, yeah. Like, endorphins are high. Mm -hmm. People's blood's pumping. Eyes are darting. Like, it's (laughs) next level. Okay? Mirrors all over town. Some kind of vibey music. There is something in the air. And... You know, for us, we go to the gym. We go to Equinox here in Vancouver. We've got a few boyfriends. We have so many Equinox boyfriends. We don't talk to. Actually, well, I talked to one and it I didn't end well. And Mine's you're sick. courting one right now. So we actually have, we actually, the last few weeks, he, but he's a hot something's commodity. changed in the water. We have started talking to our Equinox crushes. Yes, but he's a, the one, my new crush is a hot commod because I actually ran into like one of my gym friends last night and we were talking. I was like, I have a new gym crush. And she was like, oh my God. She's like, I, we've done yoga together. She's like, he's so friendly. She's like, I wanted to set him up with my best friend. She's like, or you now. Like, I'm like, yes, yeah, you yes. should tell her. Oh, he's. And you think you saw him yesterday? I think he's a different guy, but no. Okay, also a problem with our Equinox boyfriends <laughs> is that all of them look the same. And we no, have no, no. No, serious, no, no, no. They don't all look the same. They trouble. all just, we, there's we have genres. serious trouble keeping them straight. Yeah. The genre yeah. that I like is a big back with flow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have a big back, I and like you. you. Like, I just on. like, like, some fucking traps on a guy. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. A big ass and some, like, a wide ass back yeah. does it for me. You like more of the tall aesthetic, like, mm-hmm. but it also, Mostly. I think, has to do, like. I like the, gu- the guy who would play the Hawkeye in a movie. Like, that, that is, is type. your type. Your That's Hallmark type. boyfriend. I like yeah. a guy who looks like he could change a tire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And has a little more rusty. And I also judge guys how much I like them by their workouts. Yeah. See, I'm not, I'm just like, I'm purely. If I see him doing some cool, like, mobile. There was this guy yesterday. How do you feel about this? He tried to hit on me by asking me if I was using a machine I clearly wasn't using. (laughs) So I was using the hip thrust machine, obviously, right? And he, there's this, like, leg press machine beside the hip thrust machine. You know, like, the one that has the weights on it? Yeah. And it's, like, you know, the sitting leg press. So, he asked me to take my headphones off. Uh, he goes about you using the leg press. So like I'm like clearly not using. I'm like yes. I'm loading up the hip thrust thing uh-huh. with weights. Like, and he's like, "Are you are you using this?" And I'm like, 
no. I feel like this and it was machine. after like 20 minutes of him checking me out, like okay. trying to go to the yeah. bench beside yeah. me, doing the bullshit. But he was, obviously, if he was hot, this would have been the most exciting yeah. moment yeah. of my that's life. The that's, that's, that's the thing. So the we're going to get into this. But he then to talk. So like, that's fine. Whatever. He interrupted me. Who cares? I, it's not like I was in the middle of a set. Then, though, I'm foam rolling. Okay. I'm foam rolling. Mm -hmm. And he interrupts me again. <laughs> no. And goes, excuse me. And so I go, yes. And he goes, um, I just, I, I didn't, I don't think I heard you clearly the first time. Are you using this? Did you want to use this? After he's using it. And I was like, in no fucking world do I want to use a leg press. I don't know how you got the idea that I want to use a leg press machine today. I don't. Yeah. I've never commuted. You just want to talk to me again. Yeah. And I do not want to talk to you. I'm trying so, to make you his gym girlfriend and it's not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. So yeah, there's, there's this, is, this is what I want to ask you, and it's a controversial topic. Okay. Especially like an intense gym girl like myself. I have my headphones on and I'm fucking focused in. However, being sober, the gym is the only place I see men. So is it okay to walk up to a girl at a gym and talk to her oh, as a man? God. I'm... <laughs> Because the answer for, for this it. is controversial. No, <laughs> okay. you're not all for it. If he's hot, I'm exactly. For it. Yeah, I mean, she's all for it if he's hot. But even if he's not, I'm like, okay, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. So like, you'd be okay with the ugly guys, old men that like the sure, couple of the old the guys come around, see these uggos talking to me, and they're like, <laughs> look, this girl's, she's. This is a hot commodity at the gym. So if there's like, like a 60 year old man and, and he hits so on you, social. that's okay with you as long as the hot boost. ones also. I'm like, don't wow. linger. I'm like, if it goes on too long or something, I'm like, okay, thank you for the compliment. I'm, I appreciate it. This but is I'm an example of how you're a dog you and I'm a cat. Yeah, yeah, this is so an like, example. I know. I think the gym's like, actually one of the easiest places for a guy to pick up a girl. It is like if it's if your eyes are if a girl is doing RDLs and she fucking looks at you in the mirror and holds, holds your gaze. gaze. If she does this though, ha. Yeah. She does not want to talk to you. If a girl holds your gaze and you're holding her gaze and she yeah, does not want to hold it, you know do not wants, talk to her. You know when a girl wants to talk to you. She's, I'm like rubbernecking. She's you rubbernecking. <laughs> I'm, I'm teaching you all the Edmonton yeah. redneck phrases. Yeah. I was like, Jamie, you're a rubbernecker. I'm She's such like, a rubbernecker at the gym. You're I'm like, literally, literally like, like looking at yeah, everyone. You're lifting weights like with your <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at everyone and I'm looking to see who's looking around. Um, but yeah, there's some major tension. We have some boyfriend. She went through like a huge breakup with her boyfriend. Oh, I hate him. They now. never. Now yeah. he has a mustache and he looks ugly, but whatever. Yeah. Okay. So I had a gym boyfriend for three months. They didn't talk for a while, but he smiled at me. Yeah. But then when, but then they started talking outside the gym, they ran into each other. Yeah. In a, somewhere else. And <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere else. And you know, he turned out to be, a, he had a girlfriend. He also Ooh, turned out to be now? a Christian guy, like a really Christian guy that I'm just not into. A cheater. And also a, a cheating, hypocrite because he was drinking, yeah. partying, says he has like Corinthians in his fucking Instagram yeah, bio. He's a and he's cheating on his like, girlfriend that's not okay. and now you that I think lives in Texas. So now you have to see your ex. It's like, I like that annoying. though because his eyes still like, yeah. I told him that he was a piece of shit and his eyes are still like, uh, uh. see like who I thought was my gym boyfriend for a, so a hot second. Oh, I hate this story. Why? He was so cocky. I know. He's so cocky. Like, such a crush on him. I, I mean, he's a 12 out of 10, but like, like so hot. And would like, at the beginning, like aggressively stare at me when I first saw him first day, two days. And then this one day, the sexual tension, the sexual tension, real. like, and I was, yes, I'm a rubbernecker, but I was not doing it then. Like I was just like stretching my own thing. I, in fact, I left because I'm like, I'm not going to linger because of this 12. And then I'm like downstairs <laughs> eating like in the like lobby. Eating, eating your banana eating all the banana time in the store. You got to include She's of, eating a banana. Of all the things, I'm fucking like chugging this banana as he comes down. And I'm like, how oh are you God. eating it? Literally. No. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and he like walk, he like stares at me and he walks by and he like stares, but he looks back and he's staring at me like intensely. Like it was like a movie. And then he gets outside and he, and I look back over and he's standing there looking at me and he like waves like this. And then he walks away. And then you never talked again. And we never. That's my favorite thing about this story is there was nothing after that. No, so what do you do? It's like, what is that? What is that? Like. And he wanted you to hit on him. As if I'm going to go hit on a guy at the gym. Like, please. I'm going to start. 
I'm going to start walking up to guys and saying, hey, do you come here often? <laughs> do it. I bet a lot of good things would happen. Or I have a new, the, my new Equinox crush that has the, that has the flow and the red, the red shirt the other day. Mm-hmm. I get him confused with other guys, but I think that I'm going to say that to him. I think you should. My other Equinox crush I've yet to see, but we've heard John Cena oh. go to our jam. And I know he's married, so like we would never. We and would never, I just want to see I that man throwing see weights him. around. I just, like their toys. I would love kidding? to just watch what he does in the gym. Are you kidding Because me? he is, he, he is, is so amazing. Yeah. The, just like, like, I would just and he's love. he's not even my type. I would love to like, know what his program is. Oh, like, I'm like, John God. Cena, do you wing it? Do you come in with a written down program? Like, what What's kind of reps are you to? doing? What are you listening to? Like, what? Does he just not listen to music? Does he listen to Lumineers? Like, is he, I feel like there's a level of fucking jacked people, like just the strongest people in the world who listen to like, hey, they're Delilah and they're like pressing, you know, 900 pounds. Like they're, I mean, he was at the Lumineers. That's what I think. I think there's a type of person who's so jacked. They listen to like, I don't know, like some jazz and they're just running and they're just that, like they don't even need music to get their mind there. They're just there. They're champions. And I wish I was like that, but I'm not. We love you, John Cena. We love you, John Cena. <laughs> and then airport sexual tension. Air, oh, there, what's that about? Because <laughs> it's, it's why why it, the air <laughs> thick. There's some mystique going on. And airports People, are the least fun place to be. I disagree. I love being in an airport. Really? I love being in. I don't like packing, and maybe I don't like the if I'm stressed and like, like once short you're through on time. security, you once like I'm it. Through security, like that I, 45 minutes you, you have to blow, me? you like it. I'm strutting my stuff through this airport. Oh. Like it's a runway. Are you kidding? I am like vibe checking all over this restaurant. What's going on here? What's going on at gate? 20, okay, I do. Okay, I'm like, do you do this? Is you what kidding? I have to do when I go to an Social airport. Scene. I go. I go to my gate. And I'm like, yep, there it is. Yes, there and then, is. and then, check out who's there. See, and then, and then I go, I go and vibe other like, places. Absolutely. I'm I, but I go calls. to my gate first. I gotta go to the gate, and I gotta go to be the like, gate, make sure there's you're the like, gate. But then, then I got. Some but then you see some. You know, you, like we were laughing about, like, you know, when you can tell a guy's looking at you, trying to make you his airport girlfriend yeah. and you're not having it. You were <laughs> no. like, in what fucking world, buddy, would I be your airport girlfriend? Oh. Like, I am in gate G69 and you are at like F12. Now stay in your fucking gate and find someone in your lane because it's not going to be me. G69. Yeah, yeah I, I'm fine. Hey, that's your superior gate. OK, but I also <laughs> wanted to say this. Something that made airport sexual tension so much worse was the masks. Oh my god, the that masks, ruined it. The masks made it way more intense. That I it. found that so many more men no. were trying to be my maybe it's because like this up is better looking than this down. I don't know, but no, I was like the amount of the men mask. who would try to fucking lock eyes with me in the mask and I'd be like, You can't even fucking can see, see my me. face. Yeah, but they see your body and you're like, oh yeah. They were like, I don't care if she has a snaggle too, but like, I'm <laughs> I'm into her. <laughs> Well, they, I mean, you got your airport style on. You got your good outfit. Your I don't. Bags. I don't fuck with that. You don't? No. Oh, I'm out here. I like, wear that Toronto hoodie I got in the Toronto okay. airport. And before that, I wore my Calgary hoodie I got in the Calgary oh. airport at Stampede 2018. I love it. Oh, I, love it. I do okay, not like dress nice up. Bag, I nice. do not dress up for the airport because I don't enjoy I airport sexual tension. I love it. Because I've never seen a hot guy in the airport. Pilots? Are, you've never seen a hot guy in the airport? Are you not really. No, I'm not. I'm not going to meet my airport boyfriend. I'm not going to meet a real boyfriend. Why in the not? Airport. How romantic would that be? To be like, we met, we, we met on a plane. We were sitting together and I, I passed out from the, and he saved me and he, <laughs> that would be so romantic. When you hear people, who, oh, we you met ca- on a plane. You, ca- you passed out from the No, what? I've never fainted on a plane, please. I don't have time for that. But <laughs> people meet on planes. People meet in airports. Like you can, you could. And there's just like there's such mystery around like where she who are where are they going like ooh like what are they up to like, yeah if I'm heading to L A like are they what are they doing like who do they know what are they you think they I I laptop? see you're saying I should dress up to go to the airport I mean I but just see love, this I is the love, thing like I love dressing up oh I'm gonna meet my boyfriend on a fucking flare air to Edmonton. <laughs> 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 I'm out here meeting my future husband on a flare air flight my, to Edmonton. Like, my lifelong partner. I forget where I was going. I think I was like going from LA to Vancouver. Yeah. And it was like mayhem in the LAX airport because this was like COVID times. Airports were open. Everything was messed up. And this guy, oh my God, the tension. I'm like sitting there and it was like a busy gate. And he was so hot, like so hot, staring at me. Like he kept, and I, I was like so excited. I'm like, this guy in the oh. gate. My God. He and what was, happened? I thought we were going to like be together forever. And we were like, there was this tension. It was like, <laughs> oh my God, it was crazy. And then 
our gates like were right next to each other and then we separated and i went to vancouver and he went to calgary i think so he's in and calgary right now we ought to go to calgary i know i know we have to go to calgary i know that's a good guy kind of guy but yeah, calgary has the biggest wealth in of guys in in canada really yes calgary has the hot listen i've traveled to and fro i've Wait. been to pei i've been to nova scotia i've been to every canadian province except newfoundland calgary has the hottest guys in canada and the mm-hmm. most of them okay and they all have really good jobs okay. and they're single well, let's, go, let's get ourselves to calgary i'm, I'm serious I'm in the, you want to cal- you want to <laughs> <laughs> my one and only time in calgary shipped off to calgary and straight on a you went to a truck you were in old so i was in old yeah you went in a pickup truck to old to well the home? guy who picked me up to take me there he had a pickup truck that's sick and then you really we, did like cowboy we rehab in, we had a rehab van we had like a white yeah. van that they took us around like i was like oh this is yeah, i've had family members go to rehab and i remember the van yeah i remember <laughs> Yo, rehab's sick, though. It's like a vacation. It was a really, really nice house. Yeah. I mean, it was not inexpensive. Like, it was nice. Yeah. Rich people there, but... Yeah. Anyways, should we Um, wrap her up? Yeah. uh, This is... These are why we hate being... This is is what we hate about being sober, and this is the tension, the sexual tension we love at the gym. Yeah. Um, Stay tuned. Find out if anything happens. My latest boyfriend, he goes to... (laughs) He goes to the yoga classes. He, he, he he's talking. He's a slut. I'm sorry he, to say oh, this. He, I mean, a he's straight man who's no, no, that no, hot so that's hot. going to the yoga classes know, at gonna, Equinox. Obviously, obviously, this man is so jacked. Like as if he like cares that much about yoga. He's a whore. He, every time I've talked to him, he's like, we've only met twice, and like I've like the last time I like skated off because I'm like I have to go. You made me too nervous. And we were talking on the stairs. It was like a weird moment. But he keeps spe- talking about the classes that I don't go to. And so I had to pretend like I go to the classes. <laughs> and then he's like, <laughs> no, you didn't. I'm like, I just I wish I see like, when I she saw him on the stairs. I just kept walking because yeah. I had shit to do. But I was like, I can't stop to talk. And, and she he's asking me about the class. He's like, oh, like what instructors do you like? And I'm like, literally making shit up. No, like, you didn't. No, well, kind of. Did I, you say you like the boss? I said thing? I like Todd. Yeah, I said I like Todd. I think Todd is just a sub. And Todd's not even like. <laughs> I always see the names on the board. I can I'm probably like, yeah, bullshit. I like Jess. Is there a Jess? Like probably, but like <laughs> <laughs> I know he thinks. No, you did it. Fucking lie. We love him. Okay, on We're behalf of John Cena, episode. take care. Bye, Bye. you guys.